Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all for joining as well. So today we're going to talk a little bit about our joint offering with Cisco and Scality around uh, how we're helping media customers achieve a lower cost and agility uh, to meet the demands of the marketplace today. So when we look at the market, you know, we certainly see a lot of different uh, variables. Um, cost, complexity, changing and dynamic. Essentially, at a simplistic view, is that we're still seeing customers double every two years. We see the rise of unstructured data. As much as 80% of the data that our media customer store is, is actually unstructured. So things like pictures, video, rich media content, et cetera, in all different types of format. And a lot of that growth actually happens with the outside the data center. Certainly with the emergence of the digital experience and access anywhere and web services and mobile and digital initiatives, and big data and analytic and AI and ML attributes to these workloads, we're actually seeing that side of the business growing 10x faster than traditional, which obviously for a lot of our customers is how do we adapt, how do we support some of these emerging use cases and initiatives around not only about just storing data today, but it's also understanding and driving value of information and getting that into a situation that can help really drive uh, different business decisions uh, to better service your clients, right? So this massive, massive scale, massive unstructured data components, what I would call legacy of traditional with, you know, combined with some of these emerging, distri highly distributed and digital type experience initiatives that you need to support. And, you know, these are things that we're, uh, as a partner, really focused on helping customers solve. So when we talk about management of growth and cost, you know, we certainly are seeing higher resolution, which is obviously attributing to larger data footprints and storage requirements. Um, there's also performance components to that as well. And really what that means is that, you know, how do we fit these higher resolutions uh, through down to the end user uh, in a timely way? and obviously handle some of these larger, more dense files, even things like 3D and virtual reality. Um, now from a, a total cost of ownership perspective is, is that, you know, when you look at tier one storage for, for capture and stream and post, uh, post production and downstream is, you know, how are we able to do this at a, at a low cost to serve that allows the businesses to be profitable but meet the demands of the market? Uh, traditional SAN now technology is typically used. And in many cases, uh, service is a, a, you know, a component of this. But, you know, these are things that we're, we're really maniacally focused on helping to solve and to complement and sometimes uh, totally transform. Um, and we want to do this in a, in a very transparent way uh, to really maintain the types of workloads that, that you're seeing within the media workflow pipeline. And for a lot of our media customers is that these assets are kept pretty much indefinitely. And at a moment's notice could be called upon, um, you know, based on a, a trigger in the market or something that's happening. Uh, could be someone that passes away or a particular event or uh, how do we handle these just in time type situations. And a lot of people are still working from tape, which is, you know, one, one element is, is, is certainly cost effective, but from a response time doesn't really kind of give that just-in-time experience that a lot of our media customers are looking for. Um, you know, now when we look at it from an agility perspective is, is that, you know, we, we talked about different storage mediums and tier one, fan, NAS, tape, uh, cost to serve, but there's also varying degrees of different formats that a lot of our customers are trying to manage. You know, streaming and on-demand services are really taking off, especially what, what's going on today, where people want that any, de any device, anytime access to content, which could be a mobile device, your TV, it could be essentially a, your laptop or what have you. And having all these different device uh, dependencies and, again, this 24 by 7 type access or on-demand access to content, it's truly changed. It's, it's changed dramatically over the past few years, certainly just because of really consumerization of media. So together with, with Cisco and Scality, 
is that we're really focused on how to solve for those things is how do we get a platform that is active, completely scale out, low cost, dense, low cost to serve, but provides that native file and object attributes that these applications desire to meet the needs of, of the ultimate end user and, you know, get to a cost point that is, um, you know, rivaling, you know, rival tape or rival even low cost cold archives, but provide the online accessibility to really meet the demands of those, you know, near time, real time uh, event based uh, scenarios. And that can also grow very, very easy by just adding those drives on demand when you need it, but not having stove pipes or silos worth of storage and having it as one large uh, cloud, if you will, that can span not only a single site, but across multiple sites, which also helps us with content distribution uh, and agility. And, you know, when you look at it from a platform standpoint, we're really focused on providing a massively scale out massively parallel system that can do a lot in terms of parallel throughput and performance across location to really drive some workloads around content, media, media origin storage, content distribution in a very seamless way. The capacity and performance can grow independently of each other. We can support mixed format. We also support mixed uh, data access methods to support both legacy and next-gen application requirements. And again, the multi-site component to this, again, on top of Apollo, uh, excuse me, on top of UCS, excuse me, is, is that that's really something that going to like an S3260 with very, very dense hardware to up to 60 drives is great from a cost perspective, but our ability to do this across multiple sites is we really help get the data to the ultimate end user wherever they may be within their particular region, driving an uptime, if you will, of 100%. In many cases, we're doing this, and how we do this is through our Cisco uh, certified designs that we've done um, with our joint engineering, and using our best practices to hit these always-on demands with the always-on architecture, and. What's also unique is we're doing this even through upgrades and tech refreshes as well as these systems are really truly designed to do this in an always on architecture. Okay. Now from a platform and, and distribution standpoint, you know, we're typically targeting uh, entry points of a, a few hundred terabytes, but then a modular scale mechanism ongoing just by adding nodes servers and or drives based on if it's a performance or a capacity requirement. We're doing this in a highly reliable way. So we talked about 100% availability, and that's really kind of the core principle of design, but also multiple nines of durability. And, you know, we've got customers that have been running at 14 plus nines of data durability. And when we talk about media customers always needing to keep data for, you know, basically indefinitely is, Data durability is an extremely valuable asset, you know, especially over the longevity or the life cycle of the media asset. Doing this at a low cost to serve, and in many cases we're doing this at a cost level that is lower than public cloud in the data center, leveraging UCS technology. And we have an ability to do geo distribution uh, to go two, three, four, five sites, if you will, uh, with both copies and or distributed erasure coding to provide the lowest overhead possible to provide not only distribution, but site durability if a site is unavailable or out. And again, as we're going after, you know, rich media content, file content, pictures, videos, et cetera, and we're doing this again from a few hundred terabytes, but you know, we've got customers in you know, the tens to 50 to 100 petabytes and beyond. And again, the scale mechanism is very, very simple. Now from, a workflow perspective is, you know, this one's really unique for us is that providing capability for the content creators and a lot of these applications today uh, could be leveraging file and or an object interface for that rich media content is that once that hits post-production is that they need a very large scalable 
and performance system that can also distribute across location and down to the end user. So it's really common for us is that we'll work with these content based platforms, the asset managers, et cetera, is that, you know, as you can see is, is that the devices will, will, will push into the platform. The platform will store down to the, to the ring storage, either through a file or an object protocol. And from there, that is where the data is stored, it's accessed, it's distributed, and it's consumed. And, and again, it's from us, it's supporting multiple protocols, not only within a location, but across, is a, in, in a very scalable, modular way to do both capacity and performance. You know, software defined on UCS, this gives us a lot of capability because when we get into these situations in terms of workflow, is that, you know, this allows us to provide the exact right configuration to meet the performance, the availability, the durability, and also the distribution demands that we're seeing with our customers today. On top of what we're doing specifically with media workflow and storing media assets and work with the asset managers and helping with content distribution, Scality is also leveraged for a number of other use cases, which could be complementary to a lot of our media customers. So. We do a lot with content and collaboration platforms, and obviously media asset managers are a key component to that, but scanning and imaging and messaging and email, we're also a platform for customers to leverage for an archive, whether it's file, email, imaging, content, social media capture, uh, database archiving, even uh, video asset archiving, et cetera. Long-term retention for backups. So if you're using things like Commvault or Veeam or Veritas for traditional backup and recovery mechanisms, we work with all those major application vendors. And again, is they're leveraging us for long-term retention because of our economic capability, but also from our scale and our cost capability as well, uh, which obviously, again, is in that, in that environment, there's certainly a lot of tape also like we see uh, in the media side of the house as well for, for primary uh, workload archiving. But the two columns in the middle, big data and cloud native, these ones are really unique for us because you know once you have the data stored in our platform, the ability that we can provide access to any type of big data analytic component AI ML tools to understand and drive value of that information, no matter what the source is coming from, is really unique and we're also seeing a lot with web and or mobile next gen application where they're leveraging our SDK through web services to distribute these assets out to either business to consumer or business to business. And again, Scality Ring supporting a RESTful S3 based interface is purpose built for these web content delivery platforms, which we see a lot now in media. So we have the traditional uh, asset manager or uh, digital asset manager, media asset managers, but we're also seeing a lot of these web-based or mobile-based platforms being built where object storage becomes a pillar service within that distribution. So we pride ourselves on the ability to serve multiple use cases in a secure multi-tenant, multi-site way, but also multi-cloud. As you can see below is that we have what's called Ring 8, which is our distributed file and object platform software defined on UCS. But we also have a component called extended data management. What this allows us to do is to extend a workflow from on-premise to cloud of choice, one to many, many to one, a tier, a copy, and provide that in a very ubiquitous way, all derived from policy. So, especially in the media side of the house, we're doing a lot with media customers, not only within data center across their, their, their data center facilities, but also leveraging this into a pipeline that includes public cloud in a very, very unique way that allows us to do things like burst and tier on demand and provide additional agility uh, to really, again, drive value out of information. Um, we work a lot with application vendors, as you can see, we put a lot of the logos here. These are certainly trusted ISV partners that we've done a lot of the due diligence with. So therefore, these are very programmatic plug and play solutions that if you've got, you know, a video asset manager 
like um, like Broad Peak or, uh, Broad Peak or uh, Signiant or Open Text. Uh, you've got you know a Veritas or Veeam. Um, we've got best practices and solution architectures to support these these applications in a very simple way. But as you saw in the slide before, we're doing a lot with these next gen uh, microservice distributed application stacks and AI and ML, which are really leveraging our API capability and extensibility as well. So. We have a broad ecosystem which you can leverage, which is fantastic, but we also provide a platform for development. We have a, many customers worldwide, as you can see, especially in the media space. It's really a key, uh, a key demographic for scality and something that we have heritage in. And uh, again, as we're, we're working with a lot of these big media houses on storing, retaining, and distributing content at, at web scale. And uh, we're certainly doing this with, with extreme confidence and meeting the SLAs that are required. And I think that kind of goes to show why we've been, uh, you know, recognized by the, the analyst community as well. We've been in the Gartner and IDC uh, leader quadrant for distributing file and object for four years running. Um, and, you know, since we do file and object in the same platform, that is a very unique thing when you actually look at some of the, the alternative, alternatives in our market, is that they tend to require multiple platforms to provide access for those multiple protocols, but Scality has been very successful in doing that in one framework. And some of our unique drivers are just that. One is the ability to have both file and object. This allows us to service any of these content-driven applications in a very simplistic way in, in the way that they need to speak to storage. Many of the newer applications are leveraging an object-centric interface, which is fantastic, we love that. But we also have a lot of applications and even heritage-based applications that, that require POSIX or file. That is fine, we can do that and have the same outcome in terms of cost and scale. We scale capacity independent of performance. And really what that means is if you need throughput, we add throughput. If you need more transactions per second, we can add things like CPU and memory. If you need capacity, we can add disk. This is a very unique construct for scaled architectures. Typically when you pick a node, a node has 20 drives. If you need performance, you add the same brick. Even if you don't consume the capacity that's behind the brick, you're still paying for it. With Scality, that is not the case. You add the right components based on what you need. The licensing model is absolutely simple. It's based on unique data managed. If you have a petabyte of data but want four copies across the system, it's only a petabyte license, right? Um, so this allows customers, again, different policies on protection, replication, erasure coding, or even cloud, but really the license, we license data, not the raw hardware under management. And we support multi-cloud in, in a way that it has zero lock-in and we can do some very unique things on in and out of band access, which in the media space allows you to use in-cloud microservices in the native API. Um, and again, those were some of our unique design principles when we launched that capability. So. You know, we, I know we went through quite a bit about scality, scality in the media space and some of our key use cases and partnerships and alignment with Cisco and UCS being that core foundation and uh, talked a little bit about some of our unique uh, capabilities here is that um, I think we'll find when we, we, we kick it over to here to, to Dave in a second is to talk really about the foundational elements from a, a fabric and an architecture perspective hardware wise is, you know, we've really truly got best in class both software defined storage with Scality, some of the things you'll learn about Cisco UCS will really help round out on why this is such a winner in the market and why we're seeing so, so much success. So on that note, I will uh, kick it over to Dave and he's gonna talk a little bit more about um, the Cisco UCS architecture, how that is centric to media and really how the solution really comes together from a from a, from a hardware and software perspective. All right, thanks, Greg. Uh, 
just by way of introduction, my name is Dave DeRoche. I'm a technical solutions architect here at Cisco, and I focus on data center and cloud stuff for the media and entertainment space. Uh, so we've been talking about the software layer of things, so all the, the fun stuff that Scality brings to the table. Uh, but what we need to have is something that that software runs upon, and that's where UCS, or Unified Computing System, comes into play. Uh, UCS is something that we've been developing for a little over 10 years now, and we're on our fifth generation of hardware. And the idea behind it is to make your life easy. Uh, we want it so that you can expand out the environment very simply. We want it so that you can manage everything from a single pane of glass. Uh, we want it so that you can see what's happening inside of it at a very deep level. And we want it so that you can program the environment in whatever fashion makes sense. Uh, we don't want it to be a black box that makes it difficult to do things. In other words, we want it to be very cloud-like in the way that it, it handles operations. So to make that happen, uh, we've done some things like we run software that can see every aspect of the environment. And that software runs in the form of these topper rack switches called Fabric Interconnects. Uh, but it also runs in the cloud in something called Cisco Intersight, which I'll talk about in a moment. And these give you the ability to run things either locally or cloud-based uh, from a management perspective. And again, see everything that happens inside. I mentioned it being 100% programmable. Everything that we do is exposed via API layer. So uh, if you like the GUI and the CLI that we provide, great. If you don't, that's okay too. We don't take it personally and you can write anything that you want in order to interface with this. And we do this with a number of our partners. The last bit is that it has to be uh, visible. You have to be able to see everything that's happening inside of the environment. So uh, a lot of the stuff that we do is based upon analytics so that you can see when things run hot or when you need to expand and, and these kind of things. So again, it's just, it's a way of, of dealing with compute in all different form factors in a very easy to consume, easy to scale, easy to manage, easy to use kind of fashion. One of the ways that we make things easy is by using something called Intersight. And Intersight is a cloud portal that we use to access all of the different types of footprints that we have, uh, played, rack, modular, storage server based, and make things a little bit more interactive than just a dashboard in that uh, we have hooks into our tax system so that if uh, there's something known to be a problem from a software or a hardware perspective, we will proactively reach out to you and say, look, you're running a version of code that's exposed to maybe this security hole or, or something of that nature. You may want to upgrade to this version, which fixes it, or uh, a bad batch of hard drives went out or, or memory or something of that nature. The point is, is that we want to be able to interact with you and fix the environment before things happen, as opposed to just getting a red alarm and, and shipping it off after the fact and, and getting a telephone call. So the point of this is, again, to make it a very easy to consume, easy to manage system, but also one that um, enables things like high availability and uptime and so forth as we go through these. There are a number of different ways that UCS can be deployed. We're talking about uh, scale out storage in this case. Uh, there are a lot of other things that we can run inside of the environment. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different topologies that we're using for the scalability use case. But understand that in addition to that, you could also run other applications in the same environment just uh, side by side. We're not going to really differentiate between applications in that sense. So you can run whatever you want, wherever you want. And again, we're going to use the same management tools to make all of those things happen. And I'm kind of listing some of those things down the bottom. So uh, what we're looking at with Scality is on the right here where we talk about scale out storage. So we're used to traditional storage infrastructure where we have uh, the big storage vendors and they have arrays and, and all these kind of things, and we work with them too, that's fine. Uh, but in this case, what we're talking about is having the ability to run the storage on effectively commodity servers, servers that have CPUs and hard drives and all the things that you'd expect inside of them that are running this software on top of them. And in this case, we're using a couple of different rack servers to make that happen. One is uh, C-Series, which is a 2U box, um, happens to be something called a C240. And then this S3260, which is a much higher density uh, box, which I'll show you some interesting things about in a moment here. But the point is, is that 
we can use all of these different technologies uh, either individually or simultaneously, and it really depends on what your use cases are. So the 3260, which is predominantly what we use for scale-up storage environments, was built from the ground up as a modular platform. And what I mean by that is that this is a fairly big piece of iron. It's a 4 u box. Uh, it has 56 top-loading drives. And in the back, you'll notice that there's a bunch of modules that plug into it. The interesting thing about having a modular approach is that it allows us to upgrade individual components very, very easily. So if you happen to have a chassis that has a ton of hard drives inside of it, and a new generation of CPUs comes out, for example, you don't have to replace the entirety of the chassis to upgrade to that new technology. You can simply replace the server node inside of it and, and not break your back pulling the thing out of the rack. Um, another interesting point is that there are two server blades inside of the back of this box, and you can choose what your compute to storage ratio should be. So if you need more compute and less drives, you add two nodes. If you need more drives and uh, per node, you just have one, and you can actually put four more hard drives on the back of it should you choose to. And this is interesting because it, it allows us a lot of flexibility when it comes to, you know, how many drives are being accessed by a controller, um, how, many, uh, how much uh, software is hitting a, a particular group of drives, and, and so forth. So in the, in the ones that we're doing for Scality, uh, we tend to use single node designs and we tend to use as many spinning drives as we can in the top because in this sort of use case, we're looking for capacity uh, as opposed to speed for the most part. So we could put a bunch of SSDs in the top of it, but in reality is uh, that we're looking for uh, just massive capacity, which is still kind of more towards the spinning drive. But again, understand that you can do both of these. And likewise, uh, from a network perspective, we're looking at, um, again, these modules in the back. We tend to do things at either 25 or 40 gig uh, at this point, but understand that these modules are, again, changing. So as things like 100 gig becomes more popular, it's simply a matter of changing the module on the back of the chassis. Again, we want to have some reuse of components as opposed to having to constantly upgrade the entirety of a box to get to an endpoint. So with that said, we've got a couple of different offers that we're doing with um, Scality. And these fall into our Cisco validated design category. So if you look up uh, Scality Cisco validated design, you can actually get a, a white paper that talks about all of the config aspects to make this happen. But effectively, we start with, uh, there's three different um, kind of starting tiers. There's a 500 terabyte tier, which is based on C240s, again, the, the 2U box that we talked about. Um, these are paired up with a pair of fabric interconnects. And then those go northbound into some network. Now we, being Cisco, obviously recommend Nexus 9300s, but it can go into whatever happens to be in your environment. Uh, likewise, from a larger perspective, we have a one petabyte and a three petabyte usable. And these are based on those 3260 modular chassis that I talked about a moment ago. And it's the same kind of thing where we're going into fabric interconnects and then up to the rest of the network. Now understand that in this environment, you know, we're talking about a, a starting point of, of one petabyte or three petabytes, but it can grow obviously well beyond that. You simply add servers and, and you know, the software takes care of expanding the environment out for you. Uh, in fact, in a pair of fabric interconnects, they can handle up to, uh, well, in theory, 160 managed devices, but in reality, it's usually something smaller than that. And then things like Intersight can manage multiples of these environments. You could have these things all over the world and do replication between them and so forth. Again, we're looking for this kind of malleable, flexible, scalable environment. And so, Greg, I'm going to throw this back to you and you can bring us home. Perfect. So, you know, I think as you can see is, you know, some of the things that we're doing jointly, um, you know, both from an architecture perspective uh, the fabric-centric design, the reduced cabling, the, the ability to go very dense and do this in a very simplistic building block way, uh, coupled with uh, software-defined storage. Now, this allows us some very, very unique capabilities. Now, on top of this is that when we talk about things like future-proofing and moving forward is, is that the beauty of software-defined is as soon as some of the enhancements come out on UCS, where our ability to leverage those immediately is there. 
So examples would be different chipsets, different drive types, different media types, is that, you know, this is really kind of where the partnership is very unique, is that we can do this. And we even have customers that are running in multi, uh, a single system in uh, what I would call a multi-generational architecture, right? Because that allows us not to really lock in, but to leverage kind of the latest and greatest, right? So the the ability that we have there is really unmatched. And, you know, again, as we're meeting always on SLAs and highly durable solutions, and we have an ability to really tune and align those based on what you're trying to achieve, perform it or capacity or both, or even multi-site or multi-cloud. And, you know, again, as is that scaling out to, you know, whether it's a petabyte, to tens of petabytes or even larger, is, is that we're doing this in a very scalable, programmatic way that eliminates a lot of the guesswork that, candidly, um, you know, these types of systems uh, in, 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 in the past have been difficult to do, is providing the, the choice and flexibility of software to find on best-in-class UCS. Um, you know, these are the things that we're bringing to market, and again, making them enterprise ready is, uh, is something that's really, really unique. So, you know, I think for us uh, jointly as a, as a partnership and what we're seeing in the market with our customers, it's been certainly, um, certainly game-changing, right? So um, I know that um, in terms of um, closing here is that, um, you know, we certainly want to engage with you all. Um, we certainly uh, want to extend out uh, our ability to um, to have some follow up. I know we've got a number of folks on 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 today's session today. We we definitely uh, welcome that. And um, I think if we could do that, I know we had a slide with uh, the aliases on there that uh, if that can be shared out, I think that would be great. Is um, you know, we'd certainly love to integrate and, and learn from you all of maybe some of the areas where you think that our solution could be very helpful. Um, and um, you, know, you can actually uh, reach out to sales uh, at scality.com. Um, and um, on the Cisco side, I know that there was uh, an also an alias that could be leveraged as well to, to request engagement. And uh, you know, feel free to certainly reach out and, and set up you know, time kind of one-on-one -on -one to kind of align to uh, maybe your particular environment or requirement, you know, we'd love to learn about that and how we can support it. And what we've learned from a lot of our larger media customers is that, you know, every, there's a lot of commonality in terms of obviously the type of data, but the workflows and the requirements tend to be vastly different. And as you can see, hopefully it came across today is, is that, you know, we certainly have a very wide breadth of choice and flexibility aligned to a multitude of different needs, inclusive of integration with public clouds, which is, again, something that um, is a very unique capability that we have as a solution stack. But uh, in closing, um, I'm not sure um, if there are any questions. Um, I, um, I don't know if anybody's looked at the chat, but um, you know, maybe we can, we can take a peek there to see if there is any, any uh, Folks there had any particular questions um, or questions to be answered, and we can do that here. And if we not, just have, we currently just have one pending question in the Q and A. Okay. Uh, could, would you would you be able to read that? Sure. Um, it looks like it's a second part of a question. I'm not sure who was answering it originally. It's from David. How much does the storage weigh? We had a problem with object storage solutions being too heavy to deploy in a single rack due to floor weight for full racks of storage. Um, Software doesn't weigh anything, so so I think I think you'll be okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave, I don't know if you want to take that in terms of you know the typical. Yeah. Um, uh, so I can tell you yeah. at least for 3260, if you have a fully loaded one, meaning all of the drives and the top of it and such, it weighs just a touch under 200 pounds. It's actually 195 pounds. So that's per four rack units. Um, the configurations we're talking about here for the one and three petabyte are, would be three of those units. So you're looking at roughly 600 pounds and then another 28-ish for the fabric interconnects. So um, should 
be in range for most data centers that I've seen. However, uh, what does tend to happen is even if the weight isn't an issue, if your data center is older, when you start running uh, lots of these inside of a rack, uh, you sometimes exceed the power and cooling budget of that rack. Uh, so you have to kind of run things through. We have a power calculator that we use online um, that will basically show you what's being used for each configuration. And I'll make sure that that gets added into the CVDs that I referred to earlier. They don't appear to be in there right now. But what I will do is I'll uh, shoot, there's a, uh, spec sheet that has kind of all the different permutations that I will put into the chat window here. And hopefully that will help as well. You know, the other thing that we can do is, you know, it's not uncommon either is you don't have to have all these nodes in the same physical rack. Um, since our software is really providing the, uh, we'll call it the system across many nodes, and as you could, as you saw in the previous uh, slides, is that nodes can be in data center, across a data center, across many data centers. Um, is that um, if you're worried about weight in a particular rack, you know, if needed, you could put one node in a rack um, and spread them across the data center, which is, you know, obviously um, something that would be supported. This also gives you some other unique. Uh, data durability capabilities, right? So if you think of it this way, if you put one or two nodes in a rack, but you also want to now provide rack durability or rack availability, because maybe certain racks are in certain power, um, those those are all things that are completely achievable uh, in, in our design. So uh, very flexible. So it doesn't all need to live in the same physical cabinet. It could be in different cabinets in different ends of the data center, but acting as one unified platform. Yeah, the one limitation that I will add in is uh, inside of a single UCS cluster, and by the way, uh, the scalability software can span clusters, but inside of a UCS cluster, meaning uh, 30 T60 is going to fabric interconnects, there is a limit of 300 meters from a cabling distance, uh, but that usually is, is fine for most data centers to spread them out quite a lot. And there was just question, one more yeah. pending question. Um, what is the design life of this device? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Do you mean the lifespan, like what's the expected uh, longevity of it? Or do you mean how long has it been developed for? Or, uh, um, I'm not David, sure I understand the question. David, feel free to add another response to the question. I think I, I'll take a stab at answering it. I think I understand it is, you know, so from a so think of it this way is is that a lot of alternatives that we see in, in in our in our space is more like the hardware and the software are part of a unit and that unit has a generation and that usually that generation lasts you know three years uh, until the next generation of that unit comes out uh, like in an appliance form factor uh, that's really not the life cycle that we have with this type of offering. And what I'll just try to explain is, so as UCS hardware evolves, that can live in the same system as current state or even previous state UCS. Um, new drives, bigger drives, so today we have 12 terabyte drives, 16s are coming out and bigger are coming out later. Um, we're not bound to the same, we'll call it the same generation in same specific components ongoing in the same system, we do support multi-generational components in the same overall system, which allows us to have, you know, call it uh, a different type of longevity with a solution. So it's not uncommon that we'll have two or three different types of hardware generations in the same system and the same offering. And since the software is software, when new things come out, you could simply evacuate the older UCS and replace it with the newer UCS with no downtime um, when that uh, life cycle is appropriate for your environment. So uh, it's not like we launched this config here and this is good for three years or five years only. It's think of it more like an evolution that can coexist. That makes sense. 
which is really one of the beauties of software-defined storage. You, you kind of decouple, so you're not saying that I always have to build with this this particular generation of brick. Uh, you kind of elevate above that to make that abstracted and not to make that a real hard requirement moving forward, which is kind of how these systems go, because this allows you to extend life cycles and, and really not have to be forced into tech refresh in, until it's a you know, advantageous or there's a benefit, um, you know, cost or density or what have you. Great, I believe that's it. And feel free to, um, any final comments before closing out? Nope, just uh, thank you again for the time. Um, and uh, certainly, um, you know, would love to, you know, for the folks that were on, we'd love to have follow-up. So, um, you know, sales at scality.com is, uh, is, is the Scality alias. Feel free to email and certainly we can you know, have a joint session private um, you know, for your particular environment as, as follow-up. Um, but uh, hopefully it was beneficial and certainly thanks again for taking the time this afternoon. Thank you everyone for joining and we will follow up with you to provide you the Q&A and the recording after today's event. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you.